Here we have with us some of the renowned keynote speaker, Dr. R. Vivek, Dr. Udhirapan Mani, Dr. D. Rajagopal, and Dr. Julius Kimen. We are truly blessed with your presence, sir. To start with, the, we have Dr. R. Vivek to enlighten us on the perspective bioprocess engineering, past, present, and future. Dr. R. Vivek is currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering at Bits Pilani Goa campus. He got his PhD from IIT Kharagpur and did his postdoc in Stellenbosch University, South Africa. His research interests are bioreactors, bioprocess optimization, enzyme engineering, and down process, downstream processing. He has also published various research and review articles in a reputed journals. We are awaiting to listen your inspiring words, sir. Here comes Dr. R. Vivek. Over to you, sir. So very good morning. So am I audible to you? Yes, yes sir. sir. It's very clear, sir. OK, it's, it's clear. So uh, so can you allow me to share my screen? Yes, sir. Now you can share. Okay, very good morning, one and all. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this uh, international conference, BioEsna 2021, uh, the TANBIO team, uh, who have taken uh, meticulous efforts, you know, in conducting this uh, the five-day conference, international conference, and uh, the topic I have taken, uh, you know, uh, for today is the perspectives on bioprocess engineering, past, present, and future. And uh, uh, Professor Satina Raina has already covered, uh, you know, uh, important aspects of, uh, you know, in bioprocess engineering. Uh, however, like I'll uh, try to, uh, you know, like uh, give my uh, uh, ideas and perspectives on bioprocess engineering. Uh, so when we say bioprocess engineering, it means it's a, a it's enabling platform where we make use of microorganisms uh, and then uh, mammalian cells to uh, produce uh, products, products for various applications. So it can be for food application, it can be for industrial application, it can be for pharmaceutical applications, or it can be for you know, cosmetic or environmental applications. So there are a wide range of applications uh, which these products can be uh, used for. And uh, I'm going to cover, as I said, uh, the few uh, important and simple aspects, you know, of bioprocess engineering. Uh, firstly, you know, I would uh, like to, you know, take you to the past. So where it all started with, like, uh, so I'll take you back, you know, uh, some few thousand years and uh, how we gain the mastery uh, in handling, you know, the, uh, the larger cells, that means organisms as a whole, plants or animals, and then, uh, you know, the, the science, scientific facts, you know, that enabled us, uh, you know, to uh, have a better, better mastery over, you know, the, uh, the cell culture. And then currently what we are seeing, you know, in terms of fermentation. So we try to grow all these types of cells in fermenter uh, to uh, produce some useful product. And then uh, I'll present a case study, a simple case study on penicillin. Uh, so where I will try to show, you know, like, uh, you know, what was the major driving force, you know, so for the discovery of penicillin and, uh, you know, how, you know, uh, what different types of difficulties that uh, process engineers had to face to make it, to make this commercial realization of penicillin successful. I think uh, Professor Satin Narada has already covered, uh, uh, you know, this particular concept, but I, I'll try to make it short. And... Uh, uh, I'll give uh, some perspectives on, you know, like uh, the natural growth versus control growth. So that is very important for bio process engineers or the people who want to uh, make uh, an entry into 
bio process engineering so uh, important concepts to understand how to differentiate the natural growth and control growth and then uh, the next concept i would discuss uh, is you know like uh, i'll try to take some examples i'll show some examples of a product uh, so where uh, which have been uh, successfully commercialized and then i'll also give uh, the current you know biotechnology market in india okay so uh, like i said when we say bioprocess engineering uh, it's going to be uh, kind of a platform so where we make use of microorganisms to you know produce uh, different types of uh, products for various applications okay so i think most of you uh, must be uh, familiar with this picture or at least by now by uh, looking at this picture you could have figured out what it actually implies okay so you can see you know here a person is trying to inject you know something into um, you know the patient and you can see many scary faces around because actually it is uh, it is a satirical cartoon on edward jenner uh, so when he first demonstrated you know the vaccination procedure before the public okay so you can see you know the uh, you know like uh, from these pictures uh, people were really scared when it was first introduced because uh, none of them had idea about you know what these vaccines are okay so what they are meant for and uh, they literally didn't have any idea about you know the infectious diseases and how to protect uh, ourselves from infectious diseases okay so uh, the kind of fear you know is uh, you know uh, among the people is is what is uh, being depicted uh, through this uh, satirical cartoon and uh, it all happened in the year 1802 so almost uh, like 200 years back uh, so when he first demonstrated the procedure of vaccination and uh, the the wonderful thing is uh, you know like uh, even edward jenner didn't know that you know the the pustules which he used to inoculate the patient uh, you know did contain viral particles because none of us knew or uh, the virus was not discovered at that point of time the discovery of made in the the latest part of you know the the 19th century okay so uh, but you know that acts as a kind of uh, you know like a starting point uh, in the uh, domain of immunology so now so almost 220 years have uh, gone by so we we are seeing a number of vaccine candidates in the market Uh, you know, many more are yet to come, and currently, you know, like we are seeing the, uh, we have already crossed the uh, the worst phase of pandemic, and hope, you know, like uh, all of us uh, are aiming towards 100% vaccination in the near future. And uh, here, I would want to emphasize that, you know, so through this, uh, you know, the kind of successful story of, uh, you know, like uh, getting to market large number of vaccines, uh, we we must pay. you know our uh, attention to two important things how these are all possible okay so uh, we have to pay uh, credit uh, or owe credit to uh, two fraternities as uh, so one is you know the, the the scientific community so the researchers and the scientists across the globe uh, who have worked hard to come up with you know like important vaccine candidates and ensured that you know they go to a market in time and then the second important community is uh, you know uh, the bioprocessing industry okay so uh, uh, which have you know the uh, the platform bioprocessing platform already in place you know for uh, you know like uh, produce produce to produce these vaccines on larger scale and that too in a short span of time okay so though this platform is already you know like uh, there with the industries but you need to uh, spend some time in optimizing the process production process okay so uh, it is really remarkable like with a very uh, short span of time you know, all these industries were able to pump this product into the market and we are seeing that the pace at which vaccination is happening is is really uh, remarkable and it, it all you know it, it it could have been possible you know only uh, you know uh, because of the uh, sustained efforts taken by these two fraternities okay so uh, that's why i said like we must all uh, be highly indebted to this uh, two you know like community of people so who, who 
are instrumental in uh, bringing up this vaccine to the market and uh, we see you know different types of vaccines say uh, the earliest uh, you know the the, the edward jenner procedure we still allowed so we use uh, you know like inactivated form of virus and then uh, we have you know the protein subunits that means head protein subunits uh, we are using them as uh, you know vaccine candidates and then uh, now now we have successfully you know launched this uh, mrna vaccine so the first two that means uh, the viral uh, particles and then you know the protein subunits these are uh, manufactured through bioprocessing route so while the third mrna vaccine is you know synthesized in the lab uh, so uh, that highlights you know the the significance of uh, you know the modern day bioprocess engineering so we produce a range of products uh, you know right from uh, you know the, the organic acids uh, antibiotics and then uh, vaccines and then other recombinant therapeutic proteins uh, so mostly addressing the demand for uh, different types of you know the sectors okay so uh, now let me take you you know back uh, so long back uh, a few thousand years back so when uh, we started uh, you know uh, having the mastery over you know cultivating uh, you know the the macro organisms so such as trees and trees plants and animals on larger scale and try to produce uh, useful products that we want most primarily the products which we require for food shelter and uh, you know where uh, clothing uh, you know the the demands okay and then uh, if you look into you know this uh, two uh, broad activities that we started off with uh, like i said uh, aim to produce you know the products that we want uh, so one is sheep rearing so which was uh, you know started as early as you can see 13000 uh, bc and uh, uh, the another thing is agriculture uh, which was you know practiced as early as 9500 bc so both these activities were performed as an art so nothing we knew about the science you know behind you know the cultivation of or the rearing of sheep because we didn't at that point of time we didn't have any idea so all this uh, the, the kind of progresses we are seeing in terms of science and technology they all started happening you know the past 200 or 300 years or so so, uh, so when i say the understanding of science it means that uh, say if you take agriculture uh, so now we understand uh, how photosynthesis works okay so uh, what is the source of energy so plant derives energy from the sun and then it tries to capture carbon dioxide and then it tries to store you know uh, you know within it like to produce products that we want okay so that understanding is more uh, and then uh, we have moved to the technology era where we have started using a uh, large number of equipments you know uh, farming equipments and then say you are seeing here how the milk is harvested so we largely depend on the modern technology you know to derive the products that we want from this macro organisms okay so uh, from the beginning we had a very good mastery like i said all of these activities both these important activities that uh, humans were uh, depending on it started off with uh, you know art we practiced as an art uh, we didn't know much about the science but as i said you know the past 300 years have revealed a uh, lot of interesting information about you know the science behind you know all these macro organisms that enabled us to uh, cater to our demand for future now we are in the era of technology so we are, we are able to uh, you know uh, market this milk in the tetra pack which would you know stay for an year or so and we uh, we we are also seeing many such products are coming into the market so which are ready to use uh, so that's so that's what we are you know uh, moving towards so we try to uh make use of all the technology to uh you know to uh to produce more and more products not only for the present need but also for the future need okay so uh this is what happened with respect to uh, dealing with macro organism uh, that means the cultivation of uh, you know the uh, the plants or trees or the rearing of sheep and now uh, these two uh, you know now we call them as animal husbandry the in the modern uh, you know like uh, the kind of terminology we use animal husbandry because we we now know the science behind this and the technology behind this and then uh, the agriculture we now call it as agriculture science and technology because we 
uh, started applying the science and then we, we we try to make use of you know the technology with us at best to uh, make you know the products in short span of time okay so now uh, that is you know kind of contemporary uh, view so what we start off with and uh, it also happened like with respect to the microbial world uh, but without having the knowledge that you know it is microbes which is responsible for you know the production of ethanol okay so wine making was practiced as an art you know uh, as early as 6000 bc that means long back but people didn't know it was you know the, the yeast which is responsible for you know the ethanol fermentation and now with the understanding of science as i said this uh, you know the pathway is still applicable with respect to all these activities it was practiced as an art we started learning more about uh, you know the science behind the cul cultivation of microorganisms so we uh, we know like uh, now we have different subjects you know in the study of microorganisms or microbial world or even going down further within the microorganisms how different uh, you know machineries work uh, the field such as microbiology biochemistry to understand the uh, metabolism uh, happening within the cells and then uh, you know to understand how the gene functions and how when do they express how do they express so all these uh, the scientific facts about you know the use of microorganisms and the growth of them uh, you know in bioreactors you know it's it's uh, it's 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 you know known to us okay so we make use of all these scientific facts and now with the help of the advent of modern technologies uh, so we we started seeing you know the number of products coming to market through the fermentation route so this acting this acted as a kind of you know the starting point okay so we have been traditionally doing this fermentation to make wine still you know in some places this uh, traditional method of making wine is still in practice because they don't want to uh, tamper with you know the existing the cultural you know cultural uh, kind of uh, in integrity uh, involved in this project uh, in this process the uh, wine making process but uh, like i said that is you know the uh, this is a beginning it's a beginning point uh, of the uh, the modern uh, you know what we call as a modern day Uh, bio process engineering so it all started off with you know the the wine making process and we started seeing a lot many products which were practiced as an art because uh, uh, hardly you know 200 or 300 years back uh, you know we, we didn't know like how to we haven't seen the microbial world okay only after the discovery of micro microscope we started seeing you know this microbial world and it took some time for us to understand how do this microbial world you know behave it. okay so uh now with the advent of like i said uh, when we say biotechnology it is uh, the amalgamation of all you know such uh, you know the areas uh, microbiology molecular biology and then uh, your genetic engineering and uh, when it comes to large scale handling of this microorganism where we try to use it for making product uh, so we 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 rely upon you know the certain applications from or the principles from chemical engineering because Uh, two platforms you know we we have been relying upon one is chemical engineering platform the other one is uh, bio process engineering platform the chemical engineering platform is 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 uh, very much known to us we make lot of chemicals for different types of applications we we synthesize you know chemicals in reactors and then purify them the final product goes to market and that is something you know quite uh, known to us and uh, so when you take you know the products that we produce through bio process engineering platform i take a simple example uh, you know the ethanol for that uh, you know matter uh, so it is a very simple molecule which can be chemically synthesized as well as biologically synthesized with the help of microorganisms but why we prefer biological route because it is much more economically viable and there are some you know uh, large you know like uh, range of products which cannot be you know synthesized through chemical route okay so for example you take a penicillin though it cannot it can be synthesized through synth, uh, you know like chemical route you know like you need to carry out you know multiple reactions to achieve the final you know the product uh, the structure of the product okay so that increases you know the overall cost of synthesis so that is totally ruled out the large scale production of this penicillin molecules uh, is completely ruled out for it's you know the uh, the lacking they are lacking in 
the economy. And uh, there are few range of products, in fact, a large spectrum of product which cannot be chemically synthesized, for example, proteins, enzymes, vaccines, and then therapeutic proteins. These are bigger molecules which you can produce only through uh, the help of microbial roots. Okay, so we use uh, bacteria, fungus, and then yeast cells, and then we use, you know, cell culture technologies, so mammalian cells or insect cells to get these products produced. And as I said, these are the products which uh, no one can uh, think of, like practically, you know, making it possible through uh, chemical roots. And one more, you know, like beauty with uh, bioprocessing is uh, the substrate we use, that means the feed that Go, that give, that goes into the process is glucose. For most of the processes, it is glucose, which is largely available as uh, you know, like uh, Professor Satinarana has, 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 uh, has, has talked about this. Now we are uh, trying to use lignocellulosic, you know, the waste as uh, the feedstock to produce large number of because lignose, when we take a cellulose, it is nothing but a polymer of glucose, and if you break down this polymer to smaller molecules that is end product is glucose and uh, we try to use this as a substrate to produce n number of products because we are now looking for you know the sustainable products and sustainable you know like processes okay so where this lignocellulosic based uh, you know they, they are uh, they are becoming increasingly you know like important uh, because you have to have a economical process for producing this compounds. For example, ethanol is one classical example. Uh, but like I said, other types of compounds we have to strongly rely upon or only rely upon this biological process. Okay, so uh, here what is important is to understand this. Uh, you know, so one is natural growth. So if you take, you know, these two examples, the sheep rearing and agriculture because we are growing basically the organisms or you know the species as a whole okay so that uh, we cannot have uh, better control you know over their growth okay so because they are largely climatic dependent they are largely dependent on the environmental factors and the species they grow as such so though we have come up with you know like uh, you know like the mechanism by which we we feed proper nutrients but it grows on its own. So what it actually tells, like if you take two uh, plant, you're trying to grow right from the beginning and then you cannot achieve the same growth. Okay, so it, there, there will always be some variation which you can see there in terms of yield or productivity, the rice, for example, you get from two different, you know, the, uh, the grown under the same condition will always give different yield. So that is called the, you know, the natural growth. We don't have a better control over you know such macro uh, you know organisms or macro species okay which we have been doing it for ages but the on the other hand uh, when we come to the microbial world uh, they, we as a user because we are the one who is who, who is going to control the entire process from outside okay so we we see that we have you know like better control because these are uh, either in the differentiated form they are in the uh, you know present in the form of single cells or you see them as some small tissues, but not as complicated as you are seeing in the case of natural growth. So you have to basically understand uh, this thing. When we are dealing with, uh, that means uh, trying to grow animals or plants, they are eukaryotes, and we are uh, saying this as one single, you know, the uh, species. So it is very difficult to tune up because they are climatic dependent. So I'm just indicating this with minus. Okay, because we don't have better control or no control over the growth. Uh, even if there is a control, it is not like in, it's in the, the benefiting side. But now, uh, so with the advent of bioprocess engineering, we're able to grow all types of cells, uh, the higher eukaryotic cells, such as animal cells, plant cells, uh, yeast cells, mold cells, and bacterial cells. So we are able to grow all these types of uh, cells under controlled conditions. So when I say controlled conditions, we try to grow these cells in bioreactors, so where our major objective is to culture these cells, grow these cells by feeding nutrients to them. That means the food they want for their you know, survival, proliferation, and then in turn, you know, to get a product produced. And we also provide you know, the uh, necessary conditions, conducive conditions, environmental conditions, uh, so that 
you know like uh, uh, that actually facilitates this uh, the controlled environment okay so uh, when when it comes to you know growth of animal cells or plant cells again we as a user will have very little con uh, little control over their growth okay so because animal cells and plant cells as you know they are eukaryotes that means they have you know very complex cellular machineries so all these machineries uh, you know uh, we basically don't have much control over okay and these cells would tend to form tissues okay and then they are uh, largely shear sensitive even with the application of small you know force they will try to break okay so all such constraints it uh, you know gives us a kind of unfavorable condition for maintaining a controlled growth so i give a one single plus for this growth of animal cells and plant cells and then if you move down to lower eukaryotic cells such as yeast cells and most cells if you take yeast cells they grow you know uh, as individual cells they undergo the budding uh, you know and then if you take mold cells they form pellets but uh, the complex with which they work is somewhat less as compared to higher eukaryotes say such as animal cells and plants so because they have very uh, much, much, somewhat you know simpler cellular machineries so that means you can uh, fine tune their growth you know uh, the way we want and then the way we want to you know fine tune the conditions to get a product produce is somewhat easier so i, I have given a double plus for this and then when you go down to much smaller size to bacterial cells so they grow a single uh, you know like cell and they undergo binary fission and uh, so now if you are growing such cells in reactors uh, though it won't uh, behave or the 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 kind of efficiency or achieving with respect to chemical reaction cannot be seen in this case because it these cells you know they also have intracellular machineries because they have to work you know in order to you know uh, uh, get, get a product produced but we have a fair uh, you know control one can have a fair control uh, over you know the cultivation of these cells so that means the ease with which uh, we have, will will be able to grow this bacterial cells is very high okay so we can uh, tune up the environmental conditions maintain the ph temperature and all other factors that uh, are supposed to be conducive for you know the cultivation can be easily maintained and the the response by bacterial cells can be easily predicted so what i'm trying to say with this slide is uh, when it goes to uh, you know, production of compound with the use of cells in reactors so these cells respond in a different way so that uh, you know uh, that actually uh, you know uh, guides us like at what relative ease we can handle them and this is also connected to you know uh, something called mathematical model when i say mathematical model like always we try to predict the growth uh, in advance before you know adding the cells into the reactor if you know some few parameters about the cells you would be able to predict you know uh, how the cells grow in a given environment in environmental conditions and how they produce a product so uh, we can uh, study you know with the help of models how you know the uh, at what rate mature organism grows when they will start producing product what type of product it is and when uh, the uh, the production can be ceased uh, come to a termination so all these can be predicted with the help of mathematical models and uh, you know the ease with which your mathematical models or reliability of the mathematical models this will be more with respect to the cultivation of bacterial cells why because as i said they have very simpler cellular machinery so that means we as a user have better control which in turn enables you know the application of mathematical models and uh, you know uh, facilitates that we are, will be able to predict the growth or product formation or substrate utilization uh, in a very uh, simpler way and it becomes more and more complex when we uh, go up like to animal cells it becomes more and more difficult to rely upon mathematical models in predicting the growth or the product formation okay so that is one important uh, point uh, or the uh, you know the uh, points I, I would want to emphasize about you know this the cultivation of cells so how you know with respect to the types of cells uh, it gives you know the kind of uh, approachability to the user in dealing with this cell